Alright guys, I'm over here at a store about two and a half hours away from me. I'm in one of their smaller motor rooms. Uh, you got an AC, you got a condenser right now that is uh, smashed in with a uh, small little single compressor rack. Squeezed in is an adapt condenser. It's, very, it's pretty new. The newest one. But what I walked up to is a uh, tower. This evap condenser right here, this recall, is completely down. Uh, half of their store is down right now. Going off on high pressure. My evap tower is down. I have no power at all to my uh, condenser panel, bypass panel. My control alarm is on. And right here, I was tracing it out already, trying to figure out what the heck is going on. I got these, those two conduits coming through, and they go up into this uh, disconnect. Traced all that up here to this spaghetti here. This is for my pump, my water pump. It all ties into these two black wires that come down and feed this panel. But they come down through here. And so, this is my overload contactor. That's a couple overloads right here. Contactor for my pump. And that goes up, over, and down to my pump. That goes to my pump right there. And then the wire that feeds all this is here. Goes up, I trace it all the way out to the panel right here. I tore apart. I even pulled all the wires off. Right here. These are my three wires. L1, 2, and 3. Uh, right now I have it on, but this contactor is the evap condenser reaper, so that's my contactor right there for my evap condenser. And it was tripped when I got here. So I tightened everything up everything was super tight and um, so what I did was I disconnected everything my main power turned it on just to see if my breaker would trip if it was weak I hit it you know sometimes if you knock these with the screwdriver and if they're real weak they'll, they'll end up tripping uh, but that didn't did no such thing so that's apparently to be good. Okay, so then I went back over to my disconnect. I traced my wires from my evap disconnect to my another overload here, trace it up, follow the conduit down here. I inspected these lines for any type of shorts. That's not one that's just... Uh, and, and it is... I, I'm assuming this is... Let me see. It's probably 2846. I gotta double check. I gotta see how it's wired in. I haven't checked the voltage yet. So... I traced it all the way down and I already took it apart because I was debating if I should record this or not. So, once I did the find, I decided to record it. So, I came down and there it is. That is the focal right there. Pretty burnt, badly burned. I'm glad it's not burned up to the point where I can't repair it, but it's repairable. I don't have to, uh, the wires are not as too far in there. But what I did notice 
that kind of gave me a hint was this right here. This looks like some burn marks that if it arcs, this thing was completely sealed with a rubber seal. With this rubber seal. So you see how badly it arced in there? It hit that corner piece. Practically blew a hole in it, but not, not quite. And a spark had to go somewhere, so it went up and out this little hole right here. So that's a little bit of a burning mark it left. So that gave me a little bit of an indication that something was in here. So I went ahead and took it off and I found this. So I'm going to go ahead and repair this. Um, no question that, of course, this is what I, I have. I got another electrical short here. And um, all you new guys, you'll find out that about 85 to 90 percent of the time it's electrical some type of an electrical issue going on with the refrigeration so I'm gonna go ahead and repair this and then I'll get back to you guys all right I had to get some wire nuts I'm gonna go ahead and um Gonna go ahead and install these, or install them. I'm gonna put them on. Went ahead and spliced my wires nice and clean. Actually, I'm gonna show you what I used to splice them. This right here. This is, I love this thing. I've had this forever. I used to use those combination ones. I didn't care for those. Sometimes you don't want to, but sometimes you have to do stuff live. This is it. Cuts, strips, all at the same time. And it's pretty good insulated right there. Just don't touch any of the metal stuff or anything like that and you should be fine. But every once in a while I have to, um, you see how that arm right there goes up and down. Sometimes that doesn't, that cutting part doesn't spring up all the way. Just gotta grease that up a little bit. But I'm at these things. I've had these for years. Anyway, so nice clean cuts still. Pretty good. So all right, let's go ahead and um, enough on that. That's if anybody's looking for some wire cutters. Girls are flying. Uh, Home Depot. All right. So obviously you can't do this with one hand, but uh, let me do this. Put that back to you. All right, went ahead and got it back together. Do some electrical tape on there. Uh, I always do that for, for for protection, just in case anything. I don't care what it is. I just like to do that just for a little bit of extra protection. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my cover back on. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand, so let's see how this works out. That's not working out too good, but screw it, you can see something. Just gonna get one in there. Opposite side. And you get the idea. All right, last screw in. Usually use it in my drill, but 
Yeah, I grab this first, so what the hell. Give this a couple good tightens down. Alright. Gonna go ahead. Close this up. I'll tighten that up. Put that together. I'll button that up. That's what I'm working on. Okay, I'm gonna leave that open. I'm gonna leave all this out for now. Actually, no, I'm not. Just shove that back in there. Yeah, sometimes they really pack these things in there. There. I usually just need this a little bit. It's not a big deal. Okay, got that closed, closed. Everything's closed. That's buttoned up. I'm going to put those three wires on. Okay, got all of them in there. Just going to do a last tighten. There we go. I have a panel that goes right here. It's right there. And I'll put that on with two hands. That's pretty heavy. So I'm going to start it up. Fire in the hole. My motor's going to start up pretty fast. So I'm going to put my earplugs on. There'll be a lot of squilling going on. So now... I have lights. It's gonna kick on in a minute. Should be good to go. Yeah, let's go to the back of the answer. A sure way to find out that is these are hot. This is my, my drain lines. Or in other words, liquid line. But they're drain lines coming out of the bottom of the back condenser. Call them drain lines. They're all hot right now. But now that the pump's running, they should start cooling down. Start condensing, cooling down. Just waiting for this motor to kick on. And... Um, I don't want to sit here and wait with you guys, so when it kicks on, I'll turn it back on. I'll, turn, I'll start recording. Okay, my bypass just kicked in right now. Contactor, my pump's on. My VFD, that's off. are starting to cool down now oh yeah a lot a lot a lot okay let me go over to my um, compressors now that's spinning go over to my compressors and see which ones are not on I gotta manually reset some of them some of them have an auto reset Okay, that one's good. That one's on. Let's see, that one's an auto. And these are so old. These are all single compressors. Look at that. 134A. So. Yep, that's another auto reset on the high pressure control, so this one is running nice and cold. So hold that contact. Antiques, I tell you. This is an old store. See with this one. 
Ah, uh, that's the manual. Let's reset that one. side of the evap condenser nice and cold but the problem is if now it's like out here where I'm at it's about 50 degrees like 2 o'clock in the morning uh, between 50 to 60 degrees at night so if this thing's running balls out like got a bypass it's it just shut down right now which is good Yep, just the VFD just kicked in, which is very good. You can hear the sound, that humming sound. You know the VFD kicked in when you hear that sound. So you want that thing to ramp slowly and up just to control the condenser. So it won't allow this um, liquid to log in the condenser. Because if it runs too cold, like I was saying, and it starts to log in the condenser, then it's going to act like it's starving, like you're low on gas. So it's going to starve all the cases, and then they'll have high temp issues. So you got to have it in the VFD, especially in cold weather like this. That way, it'll prevent it from logging any refrigerant. So just for you new guys out there, I know you veterans there, you really know all this stuff. So, anyways, that's. I believe that's it. Just gonna wait for my alarms to clear. And look at that. Right there, that's the light shining, but that's actually clear. No light. Not like that one. See how that was flashing? That was clear. So we're in good shape. Got my um go to enter. This is a comp show by the way guys. This is Go to summaries. I just want to take an overview of all the um, all the cases. Hit enter. There we go. Circuit summary. I hate that reflection. Highlight it. Enter. There we go. So there's all my targets. My averages. That's way off. But they're dropping. They are dropping. My favorite breather has to start dropping from 28, 27. Every, you see everything dropping slow. Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and um, hang out for a little bit. But I am done. That is it. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, see you on the next service call.